Hello and welcome to episode 10, season 2 of Digitales. My name is Fezan Sayed, founder and CEO of East River. And today with me, my guest is Narjis Ali, founder and CEO of Shore Secure Solutions, based out of Washington, D.C. She has a fantastic story that you need to be tuned into to check out because she started a business in the middle of her life while moving to the U.S. After spending a number of years working for IBM, She built a business that is one of the top rated firms by NASA in government contracting in the United States. And she did this being a woman of Pakistani descent in a world where it's from predominantly white men who work. How are you doing today, Narjisali? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Asalaamu Alaikum. So great to be on. Yeah. So, so great to be on. And thank you, Fezan, for... um, giving me a little bit of time here. I'm honored. So, so I, I found your story fascinating. And, you know, I've known this for a while. You know, many of us think about migrating to the U.S. at different points in our life. And especially in Pakistan, the way things are, there's instability, there's, you know, economic and political instability. And we're looking for, you know, people are looking for a better life. And everyone thinks that if we don't college for college, or college not for college, or not for college, or masters, ke liye nahi gai, then we've missed the boat. You moved at a much later stage in life. You know, can you give me a little bit about that journey? Because you were able to set up something very successful, even though you started later. How did you pull that off? So uh, my story gets even a little more wilder <laughs> than what you're saying. So, yeah, I'm very fortunate. I'll talk about Sure Secure. But um, I was in Pakistan for most of my life. Uh, grew up in Lahore, went to Karachi in my teens and joined a uh, uh, the first mainframe that landed in Karachi, I started working as an intern with IBM. And um, it uh, took me a while to sort of be able to even get a job till I was 18. But um, I have loved what I did in Pakistan. So I was one of the early um, information technology developers there. But then I was also married with three children. Um, and we moved back to Lahore. And though I had the most gorgeous house. I had the most gorgeous friends. I had the most gorgeous in-laws. Um, sometimes in a marriage, you need more than that to work, right? So I had a, I just needed to get away from there and I didn't know what. So I had started my business back in Lahore now and I had brought IT to the education environment, being one of the first ones that set up um, classroom education with a club first um, at a computer club at grammar school and then moved slowly to all the other schools. And then I was uh, fortunate enough to hold the first uh, information technology, O-levels, A-levels, BSc, and um, FSC classes. So I established all that. I had a good team working with me, but something in me was not happy. <laughs> so I had to find new new place to start my life again. Um, I had a lakh shukar. I had everything that one would think of. But there is an inner piece that was missing. So I happened to represent Pakistan at one of the uh, events in the USA called the Comdex. So I came here. I met a few people. And I thought maybe I'm the kind of woman who may be settled better here. And honestly, if you're asking me the truth, I was also not brave enough to face my uh, in-laws and my parents, who I loved very much if I broke the marriage. So I think my reason to move here when I said, okay, let me come here, it'll be miles apart and I will get some distance, bring my children. So I did that. Um, I took a risk. I'm a risk taker, which I didn't know then, but I took that risk of not having anything here, not having a house here, not having too many friends here or anyone, but uh, just on a hope and a prayer uh, that I said internally, I just took two bags and I moved here. I brought my children and uh, I did all kinds of work. And then I finally found my niche. So that's how I moved. But I'll just go a little deeper. So I came here and luckily... But I want to first stop you for a second and ask you one thing. You're, you know, your story is fascinating already. You were already one of the first women in the technology space in Pakistan. And you were doing something that was a first in itself, which was bringing technology to education. So you were a first in two fronts. And yet that was not rewarding enough. So you moved to the U.S., without much and settled from scratch and then got into something with the government and government contracting. Again, a first for maybe a Pakistani woman. 
you know, how, I mean, you're, you've been taking these first steps. How do you make up your mind to take that step into the unknown when no one's done it before? So, you know, like most of my decisions are based on a higher belief. I am a believer. I am not a religious person and I'm not a very, you know, person who uh, adheres by, you know, some norms that are, you know, defined by our social networks, right? But I do take risks and I do believe very strongly. So I have a connection. And when I feel with my heart that I will make something out of this and I will work very hard, that's been my mantra. I believe and I work hard, whatever I do. So when I came here, um, uh, it was unusual that a woman, um, you know, in a, in a higher level, higher middle, upper class family will just walk out with the suitcase, not have any money and, uh, you know, bring her kids here. It took me six months to get my children here, but we did bring them. And of course, they were disturbed coming out of a beautiful house, not knowing where this mother will take us and living in a single room for a while. But um, uh, luckily, as I said, I believe I met someone who helped me say, oh, I've heard so much about you in Pakistan. Can you help me? He was of Pakistani origin. I'm setting up a transcription company. And I was like, uh, OK, it can't be rocket science. I will figure that out. So he said, can you do that for me? I'm like, yeah, sure. So he said, I want doctors to speak in their phone and somebody transcribes and sends it. And I'm like, OK, so I did, I researched, I set, I set up that transcription company. Then this guy said, OK, fine, I will want to set up uh, office suites where people can just walk in with a briefcase and, you know, like the workspaces kind of environment. Mm -hmm. I'm so the co-working spaces 20 years yeah, ago. 20 years ago. So he said, but I don't know how to set the network up and the phone system up and all. I'm like, OK, I'll do it. So I was literally behind people's desks trying to plug wires in, making sure their network that connected. And I set that up and I did it for about a year and a half. And then I said, you know what, this is not me. I need to do something else. So I've done what I could for you. And it was very successful. And by then I had my children over. They started going to school. And, um, uh, you know, I kind of knew the way around a little bit. So I got an opportunity to work with IBM again to work for their security software and um, do a lot of training for IBM all over the world. So I took that on and that got me right back into my IT field. So I did the consulting for IBM under a few companies um, for the first 10 years, I would say. And then uh, once I was very comfortable, I worked for the US Customs and Border Protection. I went there for 19 days to support them on a big project that was coming on. I stayed there for 16 years. So wow. you know, with the US border yeah. and customs, just yeah. that one project you stayed for 16 years. Just that one project I stayed for 16 years and I was doing some really great stuff and it was funky to be working with a team of 1800 people from IBM, Lockheed Martin. Wow, it's a big team. Yeah, so I made very good relationships. And uh, so in 2010, I was, I had a small company registered but never really did anything with it so in 2010 I got a few people who said well we'll work with you let's make a structured company since I never completed my formal business education and there was no IT education when I started back in 74 so I had learned everything as I worked and I did courses and I so they um they said you don't know how to do finance you don't know how to manage a company you don't know I was like you know what I know what I don't know. That's all. So they helped me uh, form a structure for Sure Secure Solutions. And we formally launched it um, in 2010 uh, with a few partners. One of my partners was an astronaut. So there were some good people who came in. And um, we started this. And I got my small business minority status as a woman. And there's something called 8A, which mm -hmm. you uh, uncompeted business uh, up to a certain level with the government. So we got our first prime contract with NASA. And for four wow. years, as you mentioned, we were the prime small business of the year for four years. I've got an awesome team. It's not me. It's my team. They're super people that I met again. So there's actually an astronaut on your team. He was. He passed away a few years okay. ago. Yes, But yes, I've been very deeply connected with NASA. So mashallah, um, I think so Isme, how did you how did you make that switch? Okay, it's very easy to get comfortable 
in the nine to five work. You know, a employer ke saath aap kaam kar rahe, paycheck mil rahe, and everything is comfortable or chal rahe, nizam, and you're not taking the risk, you're not taking that additional headache. But you made that switch in 2010 when you set up Shore Secure Solutions. How did you decide that, nahi, mujhe apna kaam karna and I want to take that risk and that additional headache will be worth it for me? What was the thought process around that point? So, um, again, I mean, coming here was, of course, a change for me. And I, I'm just going back two steps. Um, it was a change not so much as me being comfortable in any environment. I was comfortable with whoever wanted to come and talk on whatever subject that I could talk on. I wasn't scared that someone is gora, that someone is kala, or that I'm going to go to a company's head. Ke paas ja rahi I inherently don't have those fears. But there was a change in lifestyle. Um, one of the most pleasant things was everybody who passed by, everybody who walked across said hello and good morning. And you're mm-hmm. not used to because in Pakistan, you keep your eyes down and walk unless somebody will say something to you and start following you home. Yeah, I see. So I think that was a cultural, um, very nice shock, right? Must have taken a while to get used to. Yes, it did. But then I'm the kind of person I got, right, you know, and I was probably misfit in Pakistan because I would be very open and then people would take that in a wrong way. You know, like some women have complained to me, but uh, I think I fitted in pr- pretty well over the, over here. I didn't have any problems. Nobody treated me that my skin is not the same color as theirs. I maybe have a slight accent. Um, in fact, I got the benefit of it. Like they fact, I was going to ask you, because in your line of work, defense contracting is primarily white males from America. You know, you would be the anomaly in that space. So I was going to ask you, is that difficult? Yeah, well, again, as I said, that I probably felt blessed because my astronaut partner was white. I had another partner who was a black American and another partner who was a Pakistani origin person. But uh, I always felt that they treated me specially and I just got more brownie points for being brown. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I think it's, you know, like at the end of the day, uh, Faizan, it's the person. I think if well, if you go near a dog and you're afraid of the dog, the dog smells it. So I think if you're not afraid, you actually give that feeling out and make people feel comfortable. I have never, ever in my life working in NASA, working in the army, working at U.S. Customs, never, ever felt that I was the outsider. I got special, extra special care and treatment because they felt they wanted me to feel special. So, and do you think that was your secret sauce? I mean, in terms of how you attained success and stood out relative to the competition, or was there something else in addition to this? It's a lot of hard work. So when you said nine to five job, I've mm-hmm. never done nine to five job. I've always worked most of my waking hours to do whatever I have to do to go above and beyond. So it does take that. And trust me, I'm not in that space where I can see I'm so successful now that I can just sit at home and the dollars will keep coming in. No, it's constant hard work. It's constant effort to improve. Otherwise, everything kind of takes a, a you know, a down downward, uh, you know, mm-hmm. swing. But I think what is, uh, we're still struggling to get out of the small business space and grow. But I think uh, it'll happen only because I believe that we have the best people in the company. They've, uh, we're now looking at, strategy i'm sorry strategy to say how um how do we all sit down brainstorm and give ownership to everyone in the company so that they have a stake and they grow it i can't do it alone so one of the things that i've realized pretty early in life is i need to have a succession plan for whatever i'm doing and includes my business so i have now i'm very very grateful that uh, my team is rising up to that and i'm like you know, you can do this without me. There were days where I felt if I did not log on, my company would probably just crash. Today, I don't feel that. So I want to be able to get engaged in other things, which I will tell you about. But um, I think the trust and believing in people and making them feel proud of what they do in so many ways that you can do it uh, is probably a secret sauce of a successful enterprise. Of course, again, I say I, there's a lot to be desired. I can say, oh, I'm I'm 50 million or 100 million or whatever. 
that never stops. But to start with a team, small team, that's meaningful. I'm very blessed. I think, and that resonates really well with me. I, I believe that for any business, uh, business person or an entrepreneur, I think there are two pillars to being able to expand and grow your business or your work. And they are hope and trust because without either, you can't move forward. You need to be able to trust people and you need to hope for the best and you need to do that constantly. And I think, you know, one of the challenges that exists in the US, at least sitting on the outside, having spent time there, maybe I spent over a decade there. And mm -hmm. now I see from the outside, just the events over the last few years, the, the racial intolerance, the extremism that seems to be have, seems to have crept in. And again, that's the way the media is portraying it. Do you think that the country has changed and it is making it difficult for entrepreneurs to have hope and trust, especially entrepreneurs from Pakistan? You know, um, there are a lot of misconceptions about the U.S. and Pakistan. I must say that. I mean, I love Pakistan. I want to continuously do something to help people there. But there is a lot of misconception because of how the government and people are two different entities, right? Oh, during COVID, these last two years have been very hard for small businesses, especially. You have no idea how much money has been pumped into the small business sector to help them sustain into the restaurant business, into the small business, business owners like myself. We just had to apply online. And in no time, you know, we were getting support to say, if you have to lay off your employees, if you're not getting income because of this, you could you could get supported and you could sustain yourself. So I think that there is um, there is a lot of effort by the government to, to support small businesses. There are many categories and I, I, I love the prime minister and the government in Pakistan and I, I've tried to suggest many things. One of them being that you tender nikalte hain aur aapko, you know, jo bhi business dena hota hai. But why don't you allocate certain parts of the business? Like you have seats in the assembly or you have whatever. Allocate some parts of the business to people who are disadvantaged in some way. You know, could be a could be being a woman is disadvantaged in Pakistan. Well, it is in so many ways, right? Even here, um, if you are a veteran in the war or if you are, you know, like you should have those categories where you help those people with some disadvantages come up and allocate certain monies to it. So I think that the people here react very differently and behave very differently to the perception we have of the US in Pakistan. That's more at a government do you think? Do you think you could have been in Pakistan career-wise where you are today in America? Uh, I may not have gotten the amount of exposure and the um the tools and technologies that came more you know sort of rapidly here mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i think that i would have i would have done well as i said to you my reasons were not anything else but they were personal and i i think sometimes god uh, there's a saying where it says ke mujhe ye chahiye aur isme barkat bhi dal de to usne mm -hmm. mujhe wo bhi diya aur usme barkat bhi dal di but you know it was a risk i could have totally been somewhere else right so work hard is what i tell everyone is just give your best phir dekho kya hota hai, you know and what is survive the, wherever and wherever survive. you are mm -hmm. yeah. and so tell me this i mean you obviously you know you have the affiliation with pakistan and it's uh you know tough being away home is home what's the one thing you miss the most uh interaction with people that's what I miss the most. And I'm trying. I, uh, I, I have not mentioned this, but um, when the care school started, I have lots of good friends. Seema Aziz uh, is a very dear friend. So when the first care school started after the floods in Ravi, I remember we used to go Saturdays, go across the river, help them start the school. Then I remember I went to the governor house, asked the governor then to say, please come to the school. So I miss that being able to do that in person. I have many opportunities where I'm asked to come, but I just have to make sure that So I'm looking at uh, my team. As I said, I have a succession plan in action and uh, I'm trying to get more time to help with initiatives where I can help the people of Pakistan. Uh, I've 
very honored to be on the board of uh, Teach the World Foundation, which is a very, um, uh, it's, a, it's a big honor for me to be asked to join the board there. There's some very big names. And what we are trying to do is um, provide digital education in schools in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in India, and in Africa. So I'm hoping that as I transition out of my company, I will play a bigger role there and be able to connect back with Pakistan in more meaningful ways. I could have done something 20 years ago, but what I can do today, I can help the women, you know, maybe empower uh, women specifically and sort of teach some things which we don't teach in schools. You know, it's, it's a pity. I, I've always wanted to teach um, social norms of how to behave, how to, you know, things in life that you don't have in a book and nobody teaches them. Ke line hai ke nahi, mm -hmm. Kisi bade ko deni hai ke nahi. You know, like, mm -hmm. don't, yahan pe aao to lagta tha ke sab log ek tarike se kaam kar rahe hain. system nahi hai. And mm -hmm. I wish we, we could make that happen. And I hope if God willing, I have the opportunity, I will. That's a great initiative. And I think focusing on the education front, especially in areas like Pakistan and using teaching um, uh, as a tool to uplift the society and bring standardization and bring process and structure, I think that's the right way. You were also a past president of Open, which is yeah. another uh, Pakistani-centric uh, organization. Yes, it was uh, one of my most delightful experiences uh, because Open you know, gave me a way of my Pakistani passion being unleashed in some way to uh, to talk about, uh, you know, her growth. It's always constant growth. And also to put out events which were meaningful for small businessmen who were originally from Pakistan, trying to learn from each other's experiences, uh, trying to um, use the, uh, you know, past performances, lessons learned, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to sort of get a little jump start on their business. And I created a, a volunteer team. And I think... Uh, that's been my biggest uh, thing that I've been able to get good people around me always. So I think that open volunteer team in DC was probably one of the best that I've ever had. And I've made lifelong relationships with people because of open. Uh, I came to Islamabad because I'd invited Asad Umar and Imran Khan for one of the events when I was president. And Asad was so overwhelmed by the event that we had put up that he said, now I have come here for a night and a half just for you you're going to come back to Pakistan and set up open there. So I remember in December, he called me, he's like, you need to come to Islamabad. So I went and I we started the first open chapter, me and Moazam from uh, the open Silicon Valley. We went and we initiated. So I have a lot of friends in Islamabad who I got through a new open chapter that was created in Islamabad. So it was a delight because, again, it's that giving back in some way, shape or form. None of these are paid positions or in turn. But I worked so hard on that and I enjoyed my two and a half years as president. It was a very enriching experience. Children of Pakistani origin here, they they want to keep their entity identity and they uh, don't know how to mingle with the right people. So these forums are great to bring, you know, such young people together and help them shape up their careers, their professionals, their companies. So you've been, I mean, it sounds like you've always had a full plate. You had three kids. You moved to the U.S. in sort of the midlife stage, set, started from scratch, got engaged on organizations like Open right, right from the start. Um, and you've been doing the volunteer work since. You know, with all of this happening at the same time, you know, it doesn't make room for failures or things going wrong because you've already have a full plate with all of these responsibilities. Tell me of a time when, you know, in the last, let's say, 20 years, when you faced a challenge or there was a failure and you had all of this going on. How did you navigate through that? How, what got you through it? Gosh, you remind me of some things that, you know, sometimes you forget. So, yeah, no, there have I've had my set of failures where I've had to survive. Um, I, I When I came here initially and I had my uh, second daughter, Chiku, was with me and uh, uh, we were both trying to get by. We just got an apartment, but we had no money. And I was starting off this job and I hadn't received my pay. And I had only so much on a card. And I went and bought dinner for both the two of us. And I remember that it was 10 to 11 at night. And the guy calls me and says, we've got your dinner back. Please pick it up. You're closing. And I went and my card didn't have 
uh, it was five dollars less on the card you know so he said well oh he, this is not enough i need pass so i said okay my house is across i'm going to go grab the money and come back and of course i had no money at home so i went to chiku and i said chiku there's some milk in the fridge you and me will have milk and we'll go to sleep right and yeah i mean those were times where you felt oh my god what did i do you know but it was just a nice in the end i think it was a nice process this was a small incident i'll tell you a very big one in 2016 uh, my company was taken um, on by uh, there was a challenge one of the bigger companies who was the biggest contractor at nasa as a small business took us on because they wanted a front end you had to have an 8a woman owned business to front that so they took us on as a protege and uh, they said we will bid on this we have 800 people at the kennedy space center we know everything about this contract it's come for rebid but we will do a joint venture with you and put you in front and we will do the work but in the end i would own 51% of that so i was like i put 2 years of my life i put every penny that i had in the business to write that proposal to be there in florida on site for 2 years and um we were so sure we would win because our proposal was literally 12 pages each volume we had 13 volumes that we had written i took it in a truck to deliver to kennedy space center wow. and yeah there were four companies that bid on it and we said we know everyone we know the employees we cut down their salaries by 20% we will win this five months later we got a call to say you are one of the people selected but we will do conversations with you so they went back and forth we corrected everything long story short we get i i flew to san francisco for a meeting and as i get that i get the news that sorry to let you know that you have not won the contract the the main just wow. went from under my feet you know we had i had invested everything i had i thought i would die i thought this was death i mean i can't survive i was so depressed i shut myself in the hotel room closed the curtains it was an open global meeting that i'd gone for i'm not going out to this meeting you know so i sat in my room i cried all night and i was like i can't even go back face anybody i don't have any money anymore i've lost everything i had anyway i prayed i got up in the morning i went out and i pretended that if nothing had happened and two days later i flew back and i you know sort of just huddled with my team and i said you know we've just lost i i don't think we'll survive this i don't think we can i can get out of this but you know four years later mashallah we took a downward dip i don't know how we survived it but everyone st- stood by and today mashallah we've not only come out of that dip we look back and say okay it was sometimes failing teaches you more than a success so that taught me a lot so just so long story so the phrase that what doesn't break you makes you stronger really applies in this case absolutely does and you also realize what are the successes in life is winning the contract a success or is the journey to that you know is is the lesson that you've learned a successful you know change in you it teaches you what life is all about i can get out and be hit by a bus everything's down the drain right but every moment that i spend and what i learn from it if i learn something from a failure i think that's much more meaningful than the success itself and so in this i mean this is a roller coaster right and i can totally <laughs> uh, relate to it as an entrepreneur you're constantly faced with these challenges there's ups and downs every single day and you wake up every day thinking i don't know how i'm going to get through today and yeah. you get through it and it's fine i mean it's oh, difficult no, but it's fine. fine yeah but the, the thing is the, the one question and i have younger kids you know so i ask it from the context of kids how do the kids how have you seen and your kids are much older now mm-hmm. how have your kids over time now that you've seen them grow up and they've got their own kids and so on how did that journey of yours impact them so i think i have the most wonderful kids and i'm so grateful to god and i keep saying ke zindagi mein agar aapke bacche acche ho na to chahe aapki shaadi buri ho ya aapke sath aur koi zyadati hui ho ya aap kuch bhi bura but if your kids are good it's the ultimate reward right that you get and i'm mashallah very lucky that i have three children two girls and a boy and they are such beautiful children i know that there period of time where i was disturbed and i was making a change and i'm more of a risk taker than any of my children are so i would take a risk and i would believe 
ठीक हो जाएगा आई एम गोट वर्क थ्रू दिस यू नो बट वेन अ चाइल्ड इज गोइंग थ्रू समथिंग रफ दे डोंट नो दे लाइक वट बट नॉट वंस डिड देर लव फॉर मी uh you know sort of get affected by that yeah they would get upset they would be quiet and then they saw the end of it and they know i'm a survivor i i am i'm totally a survivor if you can name anyone that i'm a survivor and and they are very proud of me i think today because it's not just work it's just dimensions in life where so many things and so many organizations that i've been part of it's um it's very enriching and i think my kids are uh they're always by my side two of my daughters are helping me with my work and my son is a artistic person and i'm very proud of what his thought process is and how he thinks so each to themselves but i think uh, in the end we all come together as um having learned a lot from each other the family all together that's that's interesting i mean it's you know the way your you've taken your journey is very different from most people who are looking to you know emigrate out of pakistan or any country because they're looking at i want to get out of here i want to make more money and i want to live in a place where i'm comfortable you know they're not looking at here's a land of unique opportunity that i might migrate to where i will get an even more enriching journey regardless of the destination for you the destination didn't seem to be your prime objective no was there a was, destination was, did you have a destination did you say you know i want to be the ceo of this when i came here i had 3000 dollars that i had borrowed from my mamu i did bring anything from my house and we had a gorgeous home in lahore um was full of crystal and silver and you name it and carpets and whatever so when i brought my kids here and put them in a one one room home that i had acquired at that time after i started working they were like uh, my son came and said acha to khana kab lagega and i just looked at him and i said khana nahi lagega ja ke please dalo aur kha lo you know aur fir do ke bhi rakh dena ha so from that home that we had which was gorgeous and they all grew up in that so i'm happy about it but when i came here i literally had nothing and then today mashallah and i did not buy for a good car or a beautiful home or something but today i have mashallah a home that my grand kids come to and they say don't ever move from here mai kehti bhi hu na beta mai yahan se san francisco ja rahi no ammi you cannot leave this house so just like my kids grew up in that house my grandkids have seen this home which we made into a very special place lots of trees lots of birds lots of you mm-hmm. know uh, flowers and and a very happy place so i'm so grateful to god that he's given me mai ek jannat ke tukde mein rehti hu aur ye mere paas nahi tha na mere paas paise the so what what you can do in the us sometimes is if you work hard i don't know maybe you can do it in pakistan but my experience was i was allowed to live on my own like a keli aurat nobody bothers me i have my alarm system i have whatever and as i worked i grew and i could get whatever i um, there was never any you know sort of issues in my growth or somebody else wanting to take my money interesting so the land of opportunity and freedom now you had the freedom you had the opportunity you spent most of your time on work you spent most of your time on these extracurricular activities is there anything that you did in your free time that was just for you or anything like you know men play golf some people go you know skiing what was your one thing that kept you sane that thing that was yours so this with doing all this in pakistan i was part of pakistan musical conference which we used to do a, a seven night event at the at the lawrence garden in lahore every year and every month of an event so when i came here as i finally found a job and i thought ki mere visa visa sab kuch theek ho jayega i was this was one thing that kiske paas jaun kahan pe mujhe kuch milega so somebody introduced me to this lady manjula kumar she had an organization called global performing arts so my evenings and nights would go in working through he ranja a play that she was doing and i introduced mm-hmm. and it's been a love story since then from 21 years i've been part of that initiative so from zakir husain to vilayat khan saab to shabana azmi i just did an interview with shabana azmi so i was mm-hmm. on the panel interviewing her we did it digitally so that part of my life where the arts are an important part i have a musical in my house every now and then in fact i have one this sunday so mm-hmm. that part of my life is also gives me a lot of strength 
and it is beautiful here because you get a combo of India, Pakistan. You've experienced that in college. Mm -hmm. My daughter is married to somebody from India. So, you know, that combination, I would have never, ever felt in Pakistan. I go back and I see the biases that we have against, you know, cultural, religious barriers that are put up, right? And I come here and I see this was one of the most beautiful things, that there are, there are no barriers, right? The barriers mm -hmm. are put by governments and politics. And, and I love my daughter who's married to an Indian and him just as much as I love my daughter and his her husband from Lahore. It doesn't matter. So I have my cultural cup is full. There was this very famous singer, Ramnik Singh. All of a sudden on dinner, she shows up with someone and she sat in my backyard and she sang. And I was like, Ya Allah, teri rahmat hai. Kaise kaise mm -hmm. log aake hai? You know, so that's a part of my life. Probably you didn't know about it. I think now I understand where your youngest son gets his musical and creative prowess from. It's something yeah. that he got. <laughs> it's been passed yeah. on to the next generation. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so, inshallah. So, yeah, that is uh, keeps me sane, you know. And That's I good. Very good friends and we all love poetry and we all love music and we love theater. So um, that side is, I think, again, Pakistan has it, but not as much, not as in as refined a mode as you can have it here. And I think the point you've raised, I think sometimes you need to step out of a situation to appreciate that situation more. It is you start appreciating Pakistani culture only when you're far away from it and you look at it from an objective point of view. Um, very interesting chat. Really enjoyed the discussion. I know I've taken up a bunch of your time. Uh, first thing in the morning, that too for you. Thank you so <laughs> thank much you. for coming on. No, thank loved, you. It was my pleasure. Honor. Love the here. journey. And I hope this is inspiring for young men and women, whoever's watching this. Um, you know, you can make it happen and you will fail, but you have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and just continue hammering away at it. And, and, and don't forget what, what you learned in that falling. Absolutely. So that you don't make the same mistake twice. <laughs> yeah. And it was a pleasure talking to Narajas Ali. Good luck with your Shore Secure Solutions initiative. May you win every contract that you get. And I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. And when you're coming to New York, come take a car up, come to DC. <laughs> I'll come visit. I'll come visit. Okay. Thank you Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It's inspiring every now and then you hear these stories where people took a risk, took a chance and they decided to do something for themselves and for their family. And the one thing you hear that's in common with all of them is they don't give up. No matter what and how hard the challenge they face, they continue to power through it and they rely on prayer, they rely on belief, some rely on meditation, some people just rely on being able to power through things and I think that's the lesson that we all need to learn is that if we want to embark on the entrepreneurial journey we must believe and we must not give up and we must use every mistake every failure as a learning opportunity and we dust ourselves off and we try again until we succeed tune in to the next episode I hope you enjoyed this one we'll bring you some great stories next time as well see you next time